Welcome back to the show. Some Canterbury families have been sending their children away as aftershocks continue to stress them. So how do parents equip their kids to deal with this kind of trauma? We're joined by grief and trauma counsellors Tricia Irving Hendry here in Wellington with me and in Christchurch, Pablo Godoy and Chris Cataway. Everyone, welcome to the show. And I just Morning. want to, before we get started, I mean, those are the lucky families that can afford to send their children away. I mean, I have friends, you know, and they have batches in Hamner Springs. Well, they're lucky. A lot, you know, and as we saw on the news last night, a lot of families in, uh, do not have a lot of money. They're being chucked out of their homes. They're going to recovery centres. I mean, it's a very difficult time. You know, what kind of stress can ch are children facing at the moment down there? Huge stress. Mm. And it's ongoing. It wasn't a once one earthquake all over and done with. No, it's every night. It's every night. I was speaking to a parent last night on the phone and she was saying, I'm trying really hard not to be frightened in front of my children, but every time there's an aftershock, I squeal, I shout, and I look afraid and that affects my children. And it's true actually the way the adults, the parents, the grandparents, the relatives and friends respond affects children very much. It's very hard for mm. parents who themselves are very frightened. Now, you um, gentlemen are on the ground down there. Pablo, how were your children affected by the quake? Uh, surprisingly well, actually. Um, they've coped uh, in, in, in a way that they've taken um, precautions to, to make sure that um, they know what to do next time, which yes. gives them a sense of control. Um, we've talked about what we're going to be doing differently or how well we reacted the first time and that next time if it happens, then we're going to be in a good position. Um, and so they've come out, um, I'm really proud of them actually, yeah. Now, um, Chris, Tr Trisha mentioned the importance of parents and adults staying mm. calm around mm. children, but how on earth do you do that when you're you know, having yeah. to deal with these quakes? Yeah. I mean, it's easier said than done, isn't mm. it, Chris? Absolutely, and Trish, um, you've raised the, the important point here that how parents deal uh, with the with the with the crisis really will mean a big difference, and, and it's really important for the children to um, to have that support from parents. What we find in the centre is that that uh, a lot of the requests are coming through on how do parents manage themselves uh, so they can be in a good space to, to support their little ones. Uh, and so a lot of the time it is about focusing on the parents, focusing on the caregivers, giving them resources, helping them through what they're going through in the here and now mm. without necessarily going back to the trauma um, and, and just get them to really understand the psychological but also the physiological symptomology that they're experiencing is actually really normal. It's a normal reaction to a distressing event. When you say physiological, what do you mean by that? Well, in terms of um, our normal reactions to distress, uh, for, for instance, the situation that, that's happened recently is that our brain, a part, a part of our brain actually takes over that's in the back here, and that's responsible for pretty much helping us survive in an immediate crisis. It goes into this process where chemicals are released, parts of our body start um, acting a little bit differently than they normally would, our heart rate increases, mm. our breathing becomes shallow, our blood moves from our digestive system into other parts of the body that are required in order for a flight, fr flight or freeze response. And that's really normal. However, if you're not used to it, mm. um, to the levels that the people have been experiencing it, then it can be quite distressing in itself. And so when we talk to people about what they're experiencing, mm. and we can normalise it for them, this is actually really normal. This is what your body should be doing. Now, it's great that it's... Yep, sorry. Oh, no, no, not at all. I was just going to say, just um, to Chris now, with uh, working with Save the Children, mm. you guys have been doing a lot. Are these physiological responses the same in children? Well, I just must clarify to start off with, I'm not a trauma counsellor, and the approach that Save the Children is taking is that we're talking about normal people in abnormal circumstances. Mm. And the responses, as Pablo has just described, they are normal responses to an abnormal circumstance. And the message that we're sharing with parents and families and teachers and children is that it's OK to feel like this. This is absolutely normal. And the vast majority of children and families are going to recover th through mm. a natural healing process that mm. doesn't need intensive clinical interventions. Mm. So all that Pablo, of course, has said is correct, but we're just trying to share the message and to reassure parents that actually what they're doing is the right thing for their children. And this is one of the worries that parents have expressed with us. You know, we're not used to this, mm. and mm. are we doing the right things to help our kids? And so we're running a series of workshops. We are being supported by Telstra Clear in this, and we have a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Education. And we're running a series of workshops with families to help them just 
understand that the experiences they have now are normal experiences, normal reactions to a very abnormal circumstance. And just giving a few tips, giving some opportunities for families to share with each other, as well as ask questions from people who have a bit more um, professional training. And so we're finding actually that that opportunity to talk with each other is meaning that parents are sharing things, you know, my son did such and such, my daughter did such and such. And this is actually quite helpful and it's helping those parents to be reassured that actually what they're doing is good parenting under such circumstances. And they're not alone, of course. And Tricia, just no. before mm. we have a quick break, you've brought along something that you think is really useful for parents to do with their children at the moment. Well, this is Skylight. We're a national reaching organisation based in Wellington, but we distribute this little bag of journey stones. But it's something that all parents can do with their families. They can go out in the backyard and do it. It's just finding three stones. One's a jagged stone, one's a round, smooth stone, and one's a shining stone. You're putting them in your hand and they're representing different parts of life. At the moment with the earthquake, every, this represents the earthquake. It's jagged, it's hurting, it's upsetting, it's distressing, it's uncomfortable. If you put that in, you're sure it'd be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, but it's not the whole of their lives. Um, as the guys were saying, there are some really good things that can continue on and families can be strong. And this plain stone is to represent all the ordinary things you can count on, all the things that don't change. The fact that you can still go to footy practice on Tuesday afternoon or that grandma still comes for lunch mm. on Sunday. And that you can go back to school now. Oh, exactly. Well, some of them are you know, still struggling with that. But And then, of course, the shiny stone represents all the great things, the people who love you and support you, the friends you like, um, the PlayStation 2 you still can use. <laughs> so when you put them all in your hand, you realise it's not just mm. about the difficult thing. It's a very simple little tool, mm. but adults find it mm. helpful too. And let's not forget teenagers either. I know, and teenagers, you know, they've got, the, in addition to just the struggle of, of all being those a teenager. hormones of being a, t a teenager. So this is great for teens as well. All right, we're going to be right back. We're going to be hearing more about the trauma that a lot of children are facing in Christchurch at the moment after the break.